Autobots Transform. Hello, everybody. Welcome to George Reviews. I am the 80s Transformer fan. Today, I will be reviewing Hasbro's G.I. Joe Classified Series. This is my second review on the G.I. Joe Classified Series. And this particular figure is designated number four. My previous review was of Snake Eyes. I think he was number two. I think Scarlet is number one and Roblox is number three. I don't have those. Um, anyway, this is Duke. And notably absent is um, a title. It doesn't say Commander or Sergeant. It just says Duke down here. We don't know where he ranks and where he stands in this line. I don't think. Maybe there's a cartoon coming. I don't know. But and on the back of the box, absent is a bio. But I'll get to that. Duke is fully showcased in the window box packaging for mint and package collectors. You can see all of his accessories. There's nothing hidden behind the artwork. Everything is put to the left of the packaging. I was hesitant about getting into this toy line because of a few reasons. Because he's mostly stylized. He sorta of looks like the 80s and he sorta of kinda of looks like G.I. Joe Resolute. Right here, he looks like the 80s dude face and hair and everything look like the 80s do but when you turn it to the side and especially the back of the box now this looks like what's in the packaging and continue the artwork that's him giving Cobra command of the business so um I was hesitant to get in this line because these guys sort of kind of look like what I used to love but I figured they're gonna keep making figures and making bodies and the heads come off and maybe they'll make a head on a fig on a body that I don't like and I could take that head and pop it onto this guy. So I sort of kind of got into the line hoping I start to love it. Find out. So the reverse of the packaging at the top looks like we got a rattler, some alley vipers, all the figures that are currently available, including the red ninjas. These are like exclusives. I've yet to find the Baroness. Hopefully we get some of these trouble bubbles and some of these vehicles. That's another reason I got in the line. Then Snake Eyes, oddly enough, is um has some color detail that his figure does not have. So I'm gonna get Duke, Duke open right now. And inside, there's nothing further in the packaging but this little warning label, no little bio card, nothing like that that I'm aware of. You know what? Let me. So there are no tie downs on these figures, which I love. I don't understand. If Hasbro will do it to some figures and some figures they won't. The so dude comes right out of the packaging. His backpack, his rifle, his handgun, and this thing. Maybe we'll find out together. Oh, there's some type of binoculars. They are binoculars, I believe. Look into this side, and this is the side you see. So these are binoculars. So pretty much what he came with in the 80s. And that's kind of why I'm involved. I was a huge G.I. Joe fan in the 80s. And I was trying to get some of that nostalgia back now with this line. Okay, let's take a look at Duke himself. Take a look at his face. He seems to have a scar over his eye. Right there. Blue eyes. It's a good face scope. He kind of looks like a young Woody Harrelson. Sort of not what I was looking for in this line. Nor the little haircut he has. It's molded well. It looks good. It's actually faded out. It looks very good, but this is just not the look that I was looking for. And another reason why I was hesitant to get into this line. But I'm in now, so. His little airborne pin right here on his chest. Um, pouch belt thing. Whatever is a separate piece, and I'm sure it's removable. I'll get to that. His belt is a separate piece, floating freely. A buckle, some pouches, all the way around. Obviously, you can plug something in here, like the binoculars. I'll do that right now since I'm here. And that goes right there. You see the pockets on the back of his pants, pockets on the sides, his knee armor, shin guard armor. He's wearing brown boots. I love that. I like that a lot. A lot of detail in everything on the figure. You know what I don't like? I see immediately this forearm piece. This is the exact same yellow mustard plastic as his shirt, and they painted over it. 
I don't like that. They should have used the same skin tone from his face on his forearm and painted everything else. Because they still had the paint. You know, they should have uh, did that differently. And normally Hasbro is good for doing it that way. And I always give them a lot of props for that. For using um, the skin tone where they need to. But right here, they just they painted over the existing yellow or beige. He's wearing a bright orange watch. And brown gloves with some red paint on it. And some, I don't know what this is, over some type of little bracelet, ID bracelet on this side. Which is kind of cool. He looks pretty good. He looks good. I just, I'm not a fan of the head. And speaking of head, let's do his articulation. Duke can look up this far. He can look, not really, okay. He can look down this far. He has the hinge underneath his head that sits on a ball joint. And he has articulation at the collar down here so he can get it down even further than that the head 360s and like snake eyes there's no real rock I guess you gotta move his neck to get him the rock from side to side his arms up this far and his arm some of these joints and these figures are very tight you can rotate him 360 at that shoulder he has the bicep swivel goes all the way around for you and he his arm his elbow is double hands you can get over a 90 degree bend out of it coming to his wrist at 360s and it has the top hinge to swivel up and down which is very cool and I most likely like snake eyes his hands are very hard and I just stretched it just trying to pull on it. I put a stress mark right in there I think the hands are gonna break off on these figures that's gonna be a common complaint like maybe not from collectors who's just posing and sitting on the show but kids into this line they're gonna break the hands off putting the weapons in and out because the hands are too hard on his toy line coming to his abdomen he has the ab crunch goes down this far and it come back this far which is a lot a lot of figures they give ab crunches can't even move that much his waist swivel, his waist is much tighter than my snake eyes, which I'm thankful for. Snake eyes have, uh oh, wait, there's a little bit of a bobble. Oh, that's that's at the ab crunch. But he is much tighter than snake eyes. Can get his legs out this far. And get him down to do a split Van Damme style. And he has the drop hips. I just dropped him down. Uh trying to pose him. His leg can come up this far to the front. And this far to the back, not much because it's hitting like his butt sculpt. Not much to the back. Uh, and this little holster is a separate piece that's floating around on me right now. He has an upper thigh swivel that's hidden very cleverly between the molding and the paintwork. And he has a double knee joint bend. Standard on his fi these figures look like. And hidden behind his shin guard is a boot cut which is very nice they hid that very well he has the ankle rocker front I mean back to front and side to side for wider stance so that is Duke's articulation man some of these joints are tight just try to move around you pull like other stuff out some stuff is like a little bit over tight on these figures but I guess by being army figures they're meant to have a lot of play wear and, and have some resistance over time before they wear out and go super loose but it makes you pull on the other joints even harder just trying to articulate one part versus another so um let's take a look at that backpack i don't know why they make these backpacks so hard and so solid like the old school days they could have hollowed all of this out man because it makes these figures very back heavy and speaking of back heavy let's get this into his back and it actually holds on better than Snake Eyes. So that is Duke with his backpack with a shovel, two cantinas, and some molded in detail. And it looks pretty good. Looks pretty dang on good. Right now, let's take a look at his uh, little Glock. Has this gray molded plastic with a little gold paint on it. Put that in his holster for right now. If it'll go in there, okay, it goes in there. Had trouble with Snake Eyes knife. And take his AR laser power. It's got to be some type of laser gun because it's got this blue paint that's not done all that great. And for my money, they, they didn't need that. They, man, I don't know if it, like I say, I don't know if there's a cartoon coming and they're going to explain all this. But anyway, see if I can get it. His super tight fitting hand. 
and he has the trigger finger so you can put the finger on the trigger and bam it is on the trigger perfect perfect and see if you can hold it with two hands why not now, man I, I hate the fit of these hands they make it so tight and there we go he's bending a little bit <laughs> you can see if it's bent let me let me try to move that hand a little bit. I don't know if it's naturally bent or I bent it trying to put the hand on there. But he can carry everything at once with no problem. He's not as back heavy as Snake Eyes. Obviously, his backpack is not as thick. Here's Snake Eyes' backpack. It is very thick, very heavy. Just to show you real quick because I just reviewed Snake Eyes. But, yeah. Man, his accessories work a little bit better. I mean, it's, he has less or so it's less going on. Let's try his other gun. And I think it's meant to just slide into this hand. Oh no, he has tree. Uh, the hands are the same. Everybody has the exact same posing on the hands. Which brings me to another question. Why would they not give us uh, interchangeable hands? Because the hands do pop out. Let me show that real quick. Hands do pop out, but no interchangeable hands. Maybe a weapons pack down the line or different figures will allow you to miss, it, ma miss it and match and go back and alter current figures or previous figures, I should say. So he can hold all the weapons at one time. Let's see if he can store his rifle. I don't think he can store his rifle. Snake Eyes had a little thing on the side of his backpack that... Uh, what about holding his binoculars? I don't even see how this is going to work at all. Maybe if I... I guess like this... I don't know, he's, got, he's sort of covering up the lens, but I don't even want to squeeze it into his hand and maybe break it. As far as his gun, I don't think he has storage for it, or I, I'm not just not seeing it. I mean, I, you can put it right there. <laughs> uh, and there we go. But now, like, I spoke on articulation, and I always say with any action figure that has multiple points of articulation, articulation is only as good as a pose that you can get the figure into. So let's see what we can get Duke into. about you but those poses serve as purpose for this figure for me that's good enough that's pretty much all I'm gonna do with it now let's take a look at how tall this guy stands because he is a newer figure let's see where he fits into yours and my toy line Duke is just a hair above the six inch mark and since we're doing height let's do a couple comparisons to some modern day 80s updates Here's Duke next to Super 7's Filmation Master of the Universe He-Man. Here's Duke next to Marvel Legends Thor. Here's Duke next to Hasbro Earthrise Optimus Prime. Is anybody else uh, noticing that Hasbro has bought the 80s? Here's Duke next to Super 7's Lord of the Thundercats lion -O. And here's Duke next to the last Superman produced by Mattel. Okay, he really doesn't fit into a lot of the other uh, 80s toy lines. I guess he's not even supposed to. But um, other features on this figure, you can pop the head if you want to. There is the gigantic ball joint right there. I'm not sure what other figures' heads are compatible. It's kind of messed up. They make sure they make the head bigger, uh, the ball joints different, so you can chase different toy lines and you just can't miss and match. Um, it, you think they would make it more... Um, collector friendly and have the different heads pop on the other figures oh, and I'm showing you right now I'm running my mouth that you can take this little belt off and if you chose to if you put the work in you probably can get this belt off I'm not sure if the legs pop off at these ball joints there are ball joints in there and I think you can get them off or maybe you can work this belt all the way down the body I'm not going to do all of that and I'm sure this one slides off as well if you wanted to um, 
disrobe this guy, get him down to a bare figure, or put this, put these accessories on other figures, you can do that. All right, my final thoughts on this figure, it's very solid, the joints are good, nice and tight. Um, I recommend this figure if you're into G.I. Joe's and 80's figure collecting, updated 80's figures collecting. It's very cool, but what I don't like about the figure, I don't like the head sculpt. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not what I wanted from this line. Um, and what I don't like particularly about the toy itself, I don't like how hard the hands are. It says the same thing about snake eyes. And I wish they had included interchangeable hands. Why well, have the hands pop off and not give us interchangeable hands? You know, different um, pointing fingers, um, grabbing fingers, closed fists for punching, stuff like that. And I wish he had came with, and this is just a wish, the helmet. Uh, most do figures come with this, the standard uh, metal, well, it would be plastic, but the metal uh, green pot, standard uh, government issue. Uh, you see what I did right there? So, and that's pretty much all I got. Pretty cool figure. I'm happy to have it now that I got it. I was really on the fence, hoping I get another head sculpt down the road to pop onto this body. I want to thank everybody out there for watching another episode of George Reviews. The reviews of every toy has a story. Autobots transform. <laughs>